Welcome to another episode of the Odyssey Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Jeremy Mullally. My guest today is Megan McNeil, and she's from Relevant Megan, or Megan. Oh, uh, well, it's, it's technically, if you were to ask the government, it is Relevant Business, um, but my handle on Instagram is Relevant Megan, and I have been shouted down the street, Relevant Megan, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, it is, but just Megan will do. Okay, all right, so we'll stick with Megan. Just today. Megan will do. Yeah, well, I want to say welcome to the show. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Oh, I'm excited as well, because I know when we are talking, um, you have done a fair bit of podcasting yourself but you've been more so in my chair yes and sort of asking more questions so how does it feel like to be on the other side and, and talking about yourself well i don't know I'm, I'm not that well i don't think anyone is as comfortable talking about themselves as they are you know interviewing and asking other people questions but it's it's good like i love podcasting i really like the first couple of podcasts i did with the interviews I was really, really nervous, and but it's a brilliant skill to have because you don't really realise how much you use it just when you're regularly networking or just getting to know people. Mm. It's much better when you know how to be able to extract information from people in a way that you actually want to know about them as opposed to, what do you have for breakfast? Oh, what's for dinner? Like, where are you going next week? Like, what is it you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a conversation, and I think it is a, it's a great skill. So I'm excited to... To see how this goes. Well, good stuff, mate. I think it's going to be awesome. But um, I want to start with getting a sense of um, like what you actually do because you're a personal branding expert or consultant. I think it would be fair to say. Um, what well, what is personal brand? Because like I know it, I know it encompasses a lot of things. Like how can you sort of describe what? personal brand is personal branding it's just what someone thinks feels and says about you so as soon as you've left a networking event as soon as you've finished a podcast and someone's listened to it or they've watched you on video and um, they've met you in a coffee shop they will walk away and they'll either one forget all about you which is the worst case scenario especially if we're talking about business yeah so you're either totally forgotten about or they leave with an impression about you. They have these feelings that they can they can either explain what the feelings are. You know that way when you're like, oh, I don't like that person, but I don't know why. Um, so they will have, they'll feel that they don't really particularly like you or they think that they don't. And then that obviously turns into how they communicate about you. So that's what they say about you. So what are people saying about you when you're not in the room? What are people saying about you when they're asked about you? if they're asked about you because everyone has a personal brand it's whether you're strategical about it and you take control of it or whether you're swept up in what someone else makes for you because it benefits them because everyone's out to benefit themselves generally whether they feel like they are or not we are generally always self-centered and thinking oh what do we need what's 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 best for our thriving what's best for our surviving etc and um so you have one whether you like it or not but you can be strategical and you can actually have control over that narrative of what people think feel and say about you there will always be people that never like you and they won't even be able to tell you why they don't like you they'll just be like oh i just don't like that person and that is completely fine how many million billion people are there uh, not million billion but how many billions of people are there in the world you do not need to be liked by everyone so it's um when we talk about like some personal brand strategist we're strategizing how is it that we can get the right people to have these good feelings and these things that they say nicely about you in a way that's going to have you impacting and influencing what matters to you because you are not interested in the general public you're not interested in everybody liking you you're not interested in having an instagram following of 20 million and making sure that every post gets 20,000 likes yeah. you are interested in getting 10 people who completely understand what it is that you need what it is that you do and where it is that you're going and how they can help you and how they can work with you because those 10 people are worth so much more than those 100 million people that you know likes don't likes don't pay the bills and they don't keep you warm at night so yeah personal branding it's the exact same as it is for a company but it is for a human being so that's the the long answer but it is what people like they feel say and feel about you basically yeah no it seems to um you know encompass a lot as well but i i suppose you know that expertise that you have where where do you come into the picture of you know, because you, you mentioned a lot, it's being strategic in that person mm. brand. You don't want every single person on the planet to necessarily like you, but you, you want a certain amount, you know, especially if we're talking in a business context, like, and how you yeah. leverage that. Um, like, just sort of briefly, like, what, what is it that you do as, as a consultant or as an expert to 
facilitate that for other people. So work one-on-one with people, finding out exactly what it is that they're trying to achieve. And then we reverse engineer what that's going to look like. So when I start working with a lot of people, they feel like they have to attract everybody. And they're like, oh, I've heard that podcasting is the new thing. Oh, I've got to have a TikTok. Oh, I need to make videos. And oh, we need to have blogs as well. So all of a sudden, you've got all this pressure of all these different mediums and platforms that you have got to have content for. When the reality is not like that, because if you have got the expertise and the knowledge and you've got your time served already, and I mean, you've when I say time served, I reckon, you know, you've been working for about 10 plus years. So you, you know, the lay of the land, you know what you do and don't like, because I'm not a big believer in this whole, oh, you can't get promoted until you've at least been here 10 years, etc. It's more when I say time served that you've got more of an understanding for you personally of whether you like the direction you're going in or not. Mm. And like, what is it that you want to have an impact on? Who do you want to influence? Because then you can reverse engineer it and that will always change. But it doesn't mean that what works for your mate who has now started a podcast and is getting lots of work through that, that might not work for you because one, do you speak nicely? Can you communicate well? Because if you can't, then a podcast might not be the best medium for you. Um, Are you a brilliant writer? If you love writing, then perhaps that's the way you're going to get um, something. So we talk about video and obviously video is like your main thing. And I think videos are so important. If you look at any platform, people are like, well, every platform basically gives it priority in their feed. Um, And it's unless you can be face to face with someone or on a stage, Video is the next best thing because I can get, I can hear them, I can see them, I can kind of get a get a general vibe of, of yeah, 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 of like yeah. If whether I like them or not. So this is the next best thing, but not everyone's made for video. Some people are just, they're never going to get comfortable for it. Some people are very monotone. Uh, Some people just cannot deliver a message like that, no matter how much Mm -hmm. help you give them. And that's completely fine. So it's about finding which different paths are going to get you in front of the right people for the right opportunities for you. And that's what I work a lot with people. And there's a lot of mindset in there as well which sounds really woo-woo. And if I was to say to people, oh, we're going to sit down and talk about your mindset, they'd be like, no, not in time for that. But you'll find that there's a lot of taking away those layers and getting rid of all this noise. Because that's what it is, it's noise. Yeah, right. And um, when we first caught up, I learned a lot about sort of your origin of how you got into this personal branding space because from from accidentally (laughs) well yeah sort of accidentally but in a sense you had effectively been doing it in different iterations without having that name for it so could you sort of tell us how how you accidentally got into this personal branding space accidentally well if you work for a not-for-profit if anyone who's listening has ever worked for a not-for-profit you will know there is a lack of resources and I was a marketing manager for a couple of different not-for-profits and I always had no problem getting my chairs my presidents my CEOs I could get them in the media get them on stage get them through the door to have the right conversations with the right people but when it was the organization, it was, oh, well, you've got to pay for that. Or, oh, no, sorry, we're busy. Like, you couldn't get the organization through, but I could get the people through. Mm. So with a lack of money and lack of time and different people to help me with this, I was always pushing people forward. So I was growing their brands, and then the organization would come alongside them. And I had no idea that that was a thing. I just was doing what I could with what I had. Yeah. And then when I started my business, it was going to be general outsourced marketing for small businesses, not for profits, yeah. and made the same mistakes as in I was working for accountants and lawyers and focusing on the people the same as I had been in not for profits. And um, as opposed to the whole organization and pushing these people forward. And which was brilliant for them, but it wasn't really what they'd asked for. And I'm listening to a podcast one day and this guy's talking about personal branding and he's explaining what it is and what he does. And I'm going, what are you talking about? Like, that's what I do. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, like like you said, I just rebranded everything and we went from there. And it's just it's, it's worked so much better because I'm not a marketer. I'm not a generalist. I'm like I thought I was. I, uh, I I know people like psychology is my background and I just I know people and I know how to help grow them but not so much how to grow a business as whole yeah right and um like another thing that we had kind of touched on before was that and you you have spoken a little bit about it now is that I suppose that stepping out of your own shell to achieve goals in your personal brand could you sort of touch a bit 
your experience working with people and how you've been able to, I guess, guide them into opening themselves up, you know, in a strategic way, but opening themselves up so that they can um, develop their personal brand? Yeah, I guess the the biggest thing is that everyone always at the beginning always feels, and we've touched on this as well, like they have to do everything. Yeah. There's so much comparison, and I think social media is great in so many ways, but it's detrimental in the biggest way is that we think we've got to have as many likes as this person. We, we compare ourselves to someone who's 10 years down the track and we've just started. And that's always a battle that I have with everyone. And the only people I work with, they've got to have 10 plus years experience, they've got to have the knowledge and they've got to have, the, like they've got to have a pretty solid career at this point where they've got all the formal education that they need for this. The only thing that's missing is that they're worried about, well not even worried, but they're like, well what's my legacy? Like I can just keep turning up to work, I like you know, some of them are business owners, they're C-suite, etc. But what's the legacy? Like when I retire, what's next Mm. or when I sell this business like what what did I leave kind of thing so we kind of look at well there's a million other people doing the same thing as you like you sell the same product or you sell the same service but what's different about you because only you can do it in that certain way and only you can then um, distribute your profits in a certain way what to things that matter to you is it that you're in um you, is it animal welfare is it indigenous affairs is it um lgbt is it gender equality because it's different for everyone that i work with what it is they're passionate about and it's about aligning yourself with the right people and organizations to be able to build your brand around that you do not need to be on every single social media channel and making sure that you grow them all equally. You just don't have to. If you can make good content on one channel and you're managing to have that conversation with the right people, you're gonna start getting known for that. And that's probably the big breakthrough thing with everyone I work with is, they're like, well, I've been doing this forever. Most people kind of know that's what I do, but they, you know, if I go for a barbecue with my friends and I say, oh, what is I do? They're like, oh, you're in business. I, okay well what does, what does that mean yeah. uh, but what's actually important to them what does their business actually do and what is it that they do within the business etc so it's different for everyone There's it's not a one shoe fits all which is why I probably love it um, I mean the concept because like I said I love psychology of how people's brains work and what makes them tick etc is the same for everyone but there's a different road and a different channel for everyone to be able to, to tick that off yeah, right. And one thing that, that, like a question that's sort of popping up in my mind is that, you know, a lot of people when they think personal brand, they may think, you know, oh, I've got to like sort of, you know, throw out my private life. Like that's going to be, you know, open to everyone. How do you, how do you toe that line of like, I guess, revealing enough about yourself to, you know, give people that story of who you are and, and your values and so what, but also maintaining your, your own private life like where, where do you where do you find that balance when when you're working with people yeah look I think that's probably the most interesting thing is that when I work with people especially ones that would they would say I'm an introvert and I don't know I don't mm. want anyone knowing about it in my private life the more information you give someone so your your personal brand's 100% and you know I mean 30% of that will be you private 30% will be you business what you do 30% will be sort of extracurricular stuff that you like whether it's like you know a foodie team or um, a not-for-profit that you support or whatever it is right yep. so that's nearly your 100% not quite my maths are not that great I've got 10% <laughs> um, so that you... I'm so bad I wasn't even doing the calculation in my head. <laughs> so, so 30 30 30 and this little 10 um, but when you're basically filling up those little 30% with what's important to you people feel like they know enough about you that they don't really go looking for more they Mm. have a picture of you you have built enough of a picture around you whether they so that they will trust you or they don't trust you and if they don't trust you and they don't like you that's fine stop wasting your energy trying to convert people because there are so many people in this other corner that are really waiting for you that there's just spend your energy there um but they don't they feel like they know enough about you that they don't need to know more. Like you'll have one-on-one conversations with people where you will open up about things that you won't publicly. And that's completely fine, that's that's you. Um, But it's generally speaking, when you put things out onto a platform, you're just putting enough. So you have kids and you want to put them out there. Okay, you don't need to put pictures out. You can talk about Miss Five-Year-Old and Mr. Two, if that's what you want, a lot of people do that. Or you can just not talk about them at all. 
and people still don't feel like they don't know you because I I know when I was um when I was pregnant last year and then I had Lewis like a lot of people were like you were pregnant they had a baby and I'm like yeah you had no idea because of the way I had structured everything externally so unless you met me in person and I was the size of a house and it was pretty <laughs> obvious you had no idea because it wasn't yeah. part of my business and it wasn't something that I wanted anyone to know unless I wanted you to know right and but nobody ever suspected nobody asked nobody was interested in it so then that was very personal to me you can have things like that so you can have an illness you can have something you know you can have a partner that's not part of your business or part of your brand you can have children you can have pets you can have whatever you can have a a special hobby that you're really into that nobody has to know about but if you're giving people enough of a picture of you they don't go looking for it. They, they feel like they've got enough from you. Yeah, gotcha. So I guess what you're saying is that the, the context matters. So like, yeah. so your, your close family and friends, obviously they'll yeah. know you're pregnant and so what, like, but um, then there's like sort of levels beyond like when it's, we're talking in the online space, it's enough for you to say, you know, yeah, I had a baby like last week and this is what's happening in my life, but it, yeah. they don't need to go have that great deal of detail is that sort of what you're no, saying definitely not and you've got a different personal brand for different sets of people in your life right, yeah. who your friends and your family and your business and your co-workers and your clients they will all the core of you will always be the same but they will get a little bit of a different you all the way across the board and what's really important about being strategical and actually working on your personal brand is that it is genuine and you don't have to be acting because that's a whole other skill set so yeah the core is always is going to be the same but what you give to everyone is slightly different and I think that's where people get a bit scared especially with social media is I don't want my whole life out there well you mm. don't have to you have got control of that and people will make up what they don't know so if you fill the void enough there's no space for them to make stuff up about you if you're radio silence they they see little little speckles but it's not enough to fill a whole picture people will make it up that's, that's human nature. Like, you know, who doesn't love sitting on a cafe and, you know, you're in Italy, you're sitting at the side of the road with your ice cream and your nice coffee and you're watching people go by. You've got stories about these people because mm -hmm. our imagination goes wild. We're human. We love it. So that's that's what we do as people. But if you are actually putting out enough that people feel like they're seeing you, they don't go looking for the other stuff. So you do manage to keep stuff to yourself. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, but I want to circle back around to when you decided to launch your business because that's an interesting, you know, uh, evolution of your of your journey. Um, I guess what what was the point that you um, made that decision to, okay, I'm going to start up? And I, I know when you first started, it wasn't personal branding. It was, you know, general marketing, but at least yeah. um, an idea of oh, I want to start my own business. Yeah, I must have had some inclination that personal branding was part of it, even though I wasn't calling it that yeah. at that point, because yeah. I was working for a man. I had left a really great job that I loved um, and went to another job thinking it was going to be the next step up for me, but it was all smoke and mirrors. And the CEO there was not a, not a brilliant person, actually a really horrendous person. And I knew I could make him look good and mm. I couldn't do it. It was... I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't sleep at night. Just like ethically, about it. couldn't. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I knew I could. And you that, had the ability to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was what was really kind of like oh, I don't know. It was an icky feeling. Um, so that was when I was like, well, I've only been here a really short period of time. It doesn't look good if I go elsewhere now. So I started kind of doing the groundwork for starting my own business to just have an exit plan. But yeah, it really was because I, it was another not for profit, but I was really uncomfortable with what I could do, like how I could make that look. And I wasn't comfortable with how I could do that yeah 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 like you have this power like this amazing power and it's like do i use it for good or evil yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would never really have said it felt like a power but it was yeah i guess it is because branding whether it's for a business or a person or whatever it is branding is very very powerful mm. um you know we when you look at a lot of big businesses and you know if you think of some of the biggest personal brands out there like richard branson um elon musk uh, bill gates etc like we all feel like we know them we've got opinions whether we like them or not but they're all very very strategic like so there's a lot of people behind them making sure that you have those feelings towards them um and the fact that you hate or love 
love them is also good because that stimulates conversation. So mm-hmm. when we were talking earlier about, you know, you as a personal brand and, you know, we're small fries, like we're not looking for well, well, millions. Speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> <either. laughs> well, you know, after I've been on this show, I'm going to help yeah? Totally. It, yeah? Um, you know, but like we're small in the sense that we don't need millions and millions of people to see oh, us sure, and yeah, know yeah. who we are, etc. Yeah. Like they do, they're global. They're working on a global scale. Um, so again, you can't compare yourself to them. But there's a lot goes on behind the scenes with that. But it's just, you can still take learnings from that in the sense that they have that love and hate. And we've talked about only concentrating the people who love you and the people that are going to convert. But you do still need people to not like you because that's what stimulates conversation. I mean, yeah, there's just like good. polarity. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like I say, like there's no such thing as bad publicity, I guess. It's no. that stimulating of the conversation. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you've got to have both, um, both sides. And I think, you know, I talk about different um, personal brands that you can have. And one that I really hate is the chameleon. The chameleon is just someone who, you know, fades into the background. You don't see them. You don't notice them. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be that person who's forgotten. But likewise, you don't want to be the fence sitter because you don't stand for anything. So when it comes to the crux when I'm like, I have to make a decision of who I want to work with, well... I'm not going to work with the fence sitter because I don't really know what it is they do. I don't really know what they stand for. Mm. Whereas when someone is very left or very right, and I'm not just talking about politically, I'm just talking, you know, if we look at... Um, yeah, about whatever yeah. their yeah. judgments and values are. Yeah. yeah, so if they are very much on the same path as you and in that sense, you're you're aligned with them. You want to work with them. So you can't really... I mean, I still... I'm, you know, I'm kind of, it depends what your job is and stuff, religion and politics and these days COVID um, are things that you don't really want to talk about publicly too much unless they are relevant to what you do. Right. But you do want to polarise people with your opinions on other things because that's what gets you over the line and gets you known and builds your brand because you are known for this. You are passionate about this. Yeah, like you took a stand for something yeah. in particular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, and one thing that's interesting you said, because um, like I know in my own work, uh, when it comes to the, my creative process, I look to, um, you know, like films and videos that other people have created to get ideas. And like you were sort of talking about um, some, you know, bigger personal brands like, you, like Richard Branson's and mm-hmm. Elon Musk. Like for your own process, do you like, are there lessons you've learned from the way that they've conducted themselves or at least the you know, the people consulting them have conducted themselves. Are the things that you learn from those, like, sort of, I guess, more well-known personal brands that you bring into your own work? Um, oh, bits and pieces. I mean, I have one client that when I sat down with him, he was like, I want to be Richard Branson. He's like, I want to be the Richard Branson of Australia. And I was like, uh-huh. oh, okay, cool. Well, well we've got a... We've got a target here. time. Oh, yes, that's fine. I, yeah. I, I get what you're saying because you're yeah. not just in one business. You want to be a known businessman, etc. Yeah, that was fine. But I guess I get a lot of, you know, there's always great business books and I have never been able to finish a business book. I fall asleep before I can finish a business book. We need to find an audio book that's narrated by Stephen Fry. Oh. <laughs> then, then you... <laughs> it wouldn't matter what Stephen Fry was saying to me if he listened to it. Um, but I, even fiction, lots of books. Like I um, I read The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue recently, which was a, a woman who was born, it's like a sci-fi thing. Uh, she was born in the 1700s, but she made a deal with the devil and she lives for the next 300 years. But her curse is that she is never remembered. So I meet you, well, she meets someone and then as soon as you turn your back, you've forgotten her again. So she's always starting a new day. Every, it's like Groundhog mm. Day all the time for this woman um but what was really interesting is that she wants to leave a legacy she wants to leave her mark and she does that so there's like they talk about the 300 years she's been alive and all the different art and the movies and the different uh, books and music etc that she's all she's had an impact on because she has met the people who have drawn the stuff and made the music etc so she has left her mark on the world because nobody wants to be forgotten and I was reading the book and I was like this is so true we we all kind of want to get on with life and stuff and nobody wants to have a massive ego and they like most of us aren't actually out there wanting a million likes on Instagram but none of us want to be forgotten yeah that we've had this seem to have this intrinsic like yeah. legacy Build building our legacy and whether that's yeah you know that comes in different forms you know look for for a lot of people that's their children yeah exactly and their grandchildren and so forth but, yeah but and building your legacy doesn't always have to be everybody remembers you it's again 
who remembers you, mm. being very specific about who is it that's important to you that actually knows what you do and remembers you, etc. And are you living a life that in five years time you can talk about and you're proud of, etc. So I guess um, real life, uh, not so much, but like I read a lot of books, fiction books, and I see it all. It's always everywhere. People never want to be forgotten and everybody wants to be understood and everybody wants to have their story told properly. And it's not always to the masses, it is generally to the people that matter. And I think that we're all the exact same, whether it's in business or personal. And that's all I do with my personal branding, is I'm just saying to people, well, who, who does it matter? Like in five years time, who do you care about who actually knows what you're doing? What is it you're trying to actually achieve? What's the outcomes, etc.? And you reverse engineer it from there because we don't want to be forgotten. And if we are going to be remembered, we want to be remembered for the right things. We want to be remembered mm. for what we want as opposed to what someone else has constructed for us. Yeah, and that, again, comes back to that, you know, controlling that, yeah. that process and how you want to be yeah. actually remembered by people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to touch on, like, because I want to pick your brains a little bit when it comes to Ooh. personal brand <laughs> and not, not for, like... Not for me specifically, because I don't have. I think my ego would be damaged by the end of that conversation. But um, I guess, I guess, getting a sense of um, the, the the different focus areas, like um, of personal brand, and like we've sort of touched on a bit on social media. But um, from your point of view, like what what encompasses personal brand? Like, is it down to like your clothing and how you communicate? Can we just like I sort of want to segment those areas and get a sense of what you look at when you're building someone's personal brand. As soon as you walk out of the door in the morning, that is your personal brand on. Right. As soon as you turn your camera on in your house or you take that selfie or you go into your stories on Instagram, that is your personal brand on. As soon as someone can see you, your personal brand is on. Um, I mean, we can take the exception of your kids and your, your pets at home and maybe your husband as you roll out of bed in the morning or <laughs> wife or partner, whatever it is yeah. you've got, um, the exception of that. But yes, as soon as you walk out, that's your personal brand on. So what is it that is important to you? For like, Style is important. Like it's, um, I'm not saying that you have to go out and have a designer wardrobe or anything, but you know, yeah. when you turn up, do you look neat and tidy? Nobody's saying that we have to be very, very strict and corporate anymore. Like, you know, we don't have to be wearing very, like, pinstripe suits and, you know, be very, very smart. Like, fashion is completely different now. But do you look the same every time? Are you recognizable? Do yeah. I know that? So, that's like, consistency, you? like, Cons yeah. 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 If you think about um, online dating, so if I'm on Tinder and I'm scrolling through and I see, oh, there's Jeremy, he looks lovely. Uh, and then I turn up and you have got bright red hair and you're wearing a track suit. And I'm like, well, hold on, you had a suit on and you've got nice brown hair in the picture. I feel really duped. I feel really like uncomfortable with right. the fact that you are not the person that I thought I was communicating with. Yeah. So is your online and your offline presence, are they aligned? Um, if you don't have an online presence, because it's not the be all and end all, like as much as you know, we should be leveraging social media because it's available to us and it's free, some people don't want to and it doesn't suit some people. But are you showing up the first time that you meet someone at a networking event, are you turning up and showing up the same way every time you meet them? Because mm -hmm. that's how you build consistency and then if you've got consistency, you start building trust. And once you've got trust, well, you know, that's the end game really because trust's all you've really got. And it's so much easier obviously to break it. One one bad thing and you're all the way back to square one. It's like going down the snakes and ladders. Um, but it takes a long time to get up those ladders. So you just want to make sure that you've got consistency. As soon as you step out of your door, if you turn on your camera and you're online in any, any way at all, is it a true representation of you? Yeah, and just on that, because um, what, uh, a conversation I had with some of the guests earlier today, in fact, and I guess I'm revealing that I do record things on the same day. But, it's the uh, only way to do it. We want to batch. Yeah, Time yeah. is precious. Yeah, yeah. It's a lesson, <laughs> lesson for you folks who want to do podcasting. But um, uh, one thing that they were remarking about, like that, that they struggled with, is that they feel like they have to um, kind of – I guess lose a level of authenticity in themselves when they're because to, to contextualize that they were um, they were uh, tech companies and when they're um, coming in front of investors they feel like they have to sort of be this like sort of stiff corporate and communicate in that way whereas they're not like that. Yeah. I guess my question is um, where do you find that balance of being authentic but also professional? I guess is pro probably what that. Um, do you see a difference and and how do how do those two sort of 
uh, I guess, areas cross over with each other. Yeah, well, I think that comes back to when I was saying we have different personal brands for different sets of people. Yeah. Um, and the authenticity, like as much as we hate that word because it's so overused, there is no other word for it. You've got to be authentic. Um, that will be the core of what everything you do. And that comes with time as well, because when you're first pitching, when you're a new company or a new business or just, you know, you're newly out of university trying to get a job or whatever, you will be more professional. Um, and I'm using air quotes here, but you will be more, um, I guess, turned on, if that makes sense, because you're you're after something, you're new, you need it. You need them mm. to kind of see you, if that makes sense. But that's why I don't work with anyone until they've been around the block for a while because you've got to be comfortable in your own skin and you've got to be comfortable with the fact that not everybody's going to like you and it's much harder if you go into a a meeting and don't get me wrong like if you're listening here and it's like your first job or it's the first business you're starting and the first client you're trying to get over the line yes it is much harder and you've kind of got to fake it till you make it but it's really hard to maintain so if you go in like that they're expecting that forever they're Mm. expecting that label from you and they're expecting you to be that person when in reality you're not and there's plenty of other people out there that are quite happy to work with you as you are Right, and so you you might not be serving yourself in the long run, is no. what you're saying, yeah. But we need to do that to get a step up the ladder in the first place. So don't yeah. get me wrong, there is a place for that. Yeah. But when we're talking about being really strategical and working on your legacy once you've actually worked out what you want, because if you if you know if you're a 21 year old listening here just now, like at 21, I had 10 different things I wanted to do. Go out and do them all. Like, I think when you're that age, like, you know, 18 to about 24, when someone gives you an opportunity, just say yes. If you're not even sure, just say yes. Just Mm. try it. If you hate it, you hate it. Like, you've not really lost too much. Once you kind of get into your 30s and stuff, I'm a big believer in saying no. Like, you have got to say yes to things that actually serve you and things you want. And you say no because it's, you know, by the way, you're still learning a lot of things. Like, don't get me wrong, you learn until you die. Like, you're mm. 70, 80, 90, you're always learning till the very end. But you've got more of an idea of what you want. So you can say no a lot easier and just start being more you. I, I just think you end up going down this road of being the person that that person thinks that you are they expect you to be and you start being the person that they need you to be for them to grow as opposed to for you to grow and yeah once you kind of get into that mid-20s 30s 40s 50s that's when you start going okay well now it needs to be for me when you're much younger take every opportunity you can be the person that they need you to be so that you can get through the door and you can get the opportunity and the experience and see what you do and don't like but after that no wear wear what it is that you're comfortable in it's not you know (laughs) you don't want to be in like your trackies all the time but like you know be fairly comfortable and turn up as you yeah i think that's important yeah that's a long way of saying it will serve you in the long run to be you yeah yeah and yeah there is like you said it's the same thing in the online space you know the the context matters as well um and striking that balance is is an ever ever changing um battle but um one thing i want to ask you uh megan is um what, what would you say is the like the biggest challenge you've had from like a business point of view the biggest challenge you've had in your um career so even before you started this business but i guess your um your uh, your journey through this this um personal branding uh, uh what should we call it Oh, just being oh I suppose just anything uh, probably yeah. being a woman um, and which okay. I, I think is a very cliche you know the gender equity blah 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 all that kind of stuff yeah. but it is real and I didn't really realise it was real until I came to Australia because my mum was like a manager she was the youngest manager in the post office in the UK when I was younger and dad always worked in the railway so as far as I was concerned mum had a better job like on paper I, so I never thought that men had better jobs, if that made sense. Yeah. And then when I came here and I was working in agriculture, of all things, um, which is very male-dominated, I would I had male staff under me and I would have people coming in, speaking to them as if they were the boss and they were like fresh out of university and they were green as, but they would ignore me and go straight to these men, or boys even, um, 
so there was a big disconnect there. I, I find that like since becoming a mother as well, it's been an issue because there's a lot of questions I'll be asked that my husband would never be asked about like where my kid is, um, how I'm going to manage that, etc. And we do everything 50-50, like yeah. literally 50-50 for as far as like getting up in the middle of the night, changing everything. Um, so that, which is brilliant. I'm so lucky that I've got a partner like that. But yeah, being a woman has probably been a bit of a a stumbling block that I never imagined I suppose as a my early 20s didn't think was a thing and it's just mm. as I've grown it's you, very, you notice it more when you yeah, grow grown older yeah yeah and yeah. I think it's very easy you know in all professions lawyers accountants marketing everything there's you know a lot of graduates you know it's generally 50 50 male and female and everyone can go in it's when you start getting to middle management and you start going up and you start um, building your own businesses and things like that women generally have got more expectations of them outside of just work and also that kind of like oh well have you got kids now what will happen with them will you be able to deliver for us type thing and um I wasn't quite I don't think I was ready for that I did I thought it was a thing but I didn't think it was going to impact me but it did so, yeah okay yeah. and then and then in this iteration of um starting your business have you have you found it difficult as being a, a female um business owner like has, has there been uh sort of nuances that uh you know even working because you, you I know you've got a lot of female clients as well like other things that you've picked up on where um, you know being a female that's been uh, different or challenging from a different point of view yeah so the majority of my clients are actually male and they are far more open to doing everything uh, right. there's a lot less of that mindset thing needing to that hurdle to have to go over whereas with women it's a bit harder in terms of like I'm like oh well we need to get a decent headshot because the headshot you've got is five years ago you don't even look like that anymore men will be like oh yeah well can you just book in a photographer for me and I'm like yeah okay cool we'll get it done women it takes weeks sometimes months to be able to get that because of, oh well I'll need to do my hair or oh, I need to do that and oh, I need to um, get childcare like there's a lot more movement to it right. um there's also a lot more kind of oh well even when it like comes to video or something like that oh well I don't want such and such to see it or all oh, the girls from school oh they'll laugh at me or all oh, the girls I used to work with at this office or you know there's a bit more of that whereas men will tend to be oh yeah okay well we'll give it a try let's well, yeah. let's do it or oh that was rubbish but hey whatever and like their their mates will make fun of them from it but you can see that they're also chuffed that their mates have watched it if that makes sense yeah okay whereas Where with the women they're like oh my mates watched it but oh they were probably laughing at me right and, and what yeah. do you what do you think the difference is do you think it's the the, the social pressure or is it I think it's like a confidence thing i think yeah. um i i really hope that the next generation don't have this and I don't think that they do as much because I think things are changing as much as there's still a long way to go I still think there has been a big change like I think about my grand she was when she got married she was asked oh when will you